Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and thank you, Secretary Raimondo, for testifying today. I'm a big fan of yours, as I think you may know. Uh, but Gus made me think about the fact that uh, the tourism economy, because, you know, I'm at the Jersey Shore. That's that's part of my district. And, um, of course, Gus and Kathy Castor need to know that all the Floridians are back here. The snowbirds have returned. And it's like it can barely move this past weekend uh, in New Jersey at the shore. It's unbelievable. But I'm not suggesting we don't need to do more for our tourism economy. But I also have to thank the secretary because, you know, I can't help that, but think of you as the governor today, because if you see, I have my thing that says I voted. Today's the gubernatorial primary and the legislative primary in New Jersey. So I'm thinking of your term as governor and the similarities between Rhode Island and New Jersey, Rhode Island being the ocean state, uh, you know, high density population, uh, but a lot of tourism and recreational areas along the shore. So I'm thinking about your state and my state and all those snowbirds that are back from Florida as well. Anyway, the Department of Commerce has one overarching goal, and that's to help the American economy grow. In order to meet that goal, we must ensure that the U.S. has a vibrant and thriving industrial base, a base capable of developing the technologies and manufacturing the products essential for economic development and prosperity, advanced technologies and products like next generation artificial intelligence, cutting edge telecommunications, and advanced manufacturing equipment. But America's manufacturing base, as we know, faces steady headwinds. Over the past few decades, multinational corporations favoring their short-term financial interests have adopted the business strategy of offshoring, sending operations and jobs overseas. And these actions have severely eroded America's capacity to produce with more than 5 million manufacturing jobs lost since 2000. As a result, the U.S. now relies on production in other countries for many of our necessities. And this steady erosion of America's productive capacity threatens our nation's economic vitality, international competitiveness, and, and resilience to economic shocks and national emergencies. And the lack of domestic equipment manufacturers results in telecommunication providers buying suspect equipment from companies like Huawei, undermining communication network security, a major global shortage of semiconductors has forced some manufacturers of autos and consumer electronics to idle or delay production, harming our economic recovery. And the Department of Defense has warned that the decline in domestic manufacturing capacity and capability could result in a growing and permanent national security deficit. So while the U.S. manufacturing capacity has waned, our economic competitors' capacity is on the rise. In 2010, China surpassed the U.S. as the world's largest manufacturing country. The United States must restore its capacity to produce critical products essential to our economic welfare and national security. We need a bold, transformative vision for revitalizing American manufacturing and shoring up our supply chain. So I was so pleased that the Biden administration, Madam Secretary, has released the American Jobs Plan in its fiscal 22 budget, which included a comprehensive set of policies to restore America's industrial power. The administration is proposing $300 billion for investments to retool and revitalize American manufacturing, $50 billion to improve the resilience of capacity of critical supply chains, and $50 billion to support research, development, and production of semiconductors. And I'm also happy to see the administration announced actions today that it plans to take to address vulnerabilities in critical product supply chains. So with the American Jobs Plan, the U.S. will harness innovation, strengthen the industrial base, and invest in the American worker. It will help ensure our economic success, strengthen our national security, and improve our preparedness for the next national emergency. So it's time to reinvest and refocus on U.S. manufacturing, and that's a critical component of the American Jobs Plan. Finally, the Commerce Department is key to advancing good telecommunic telecommunications policy. At the end of last year, I worked on a bipartisan basis to pass critical broadband provisions as part of the final omnibus, and that uh, legislation established a $1 billion grant in National Telecommunications and Information Administration, NTIA, to support broadband conductivity on tribal lands that included rural broadband grants. And, and broadband access at minority serving institutions. It established an office in NTIA to coordinate and ensure the efficiency of broadband support across the federal government. So we look forward to working with you, Secretary Raimondo, on creating these policies and look forward to your testimony today. 
I know based on your experience as governor and your work in the private sector that you really can make a difference. And that's why it's so great to see you. Thank you again. And thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back.